Hi, welcome back. Today I want to do a video of uh, properly adjusting your color grades inside of DaVinci Resolve Studio or even the free version. I am using DaVinci Resolve Studio here on Linux. I'm currently on the 18.6. Uh, I have not switched to the 19 until it switches to stable. Uh, but I am. Let's see, I will go here. Let's go to Preferences, Memory GPU. You will see I am using the Radeon RX 7900 GRE. I am not using the Rockham driver. I am using <laughs> the Rusty CL OpenCL driver. So I'm running a full open source Mesa driver stack for running my system with open with OpenCL. And if I scrub through, you can see that the audio is working. This is 4K, 24 frames a second footage. It is 10 bit 422 footage. And obviously, it scrubs perfectly fine under DaVinci Resolve. And this is obviously H260. Let's see. We go to metadata. The Panasonic Lumix S52 captured at H264, 422, 10-bit linear PCM audio. As you can see, bit depth is 10-bit. And this camera captures four channels of audio. I did have a shotgun mic on the camera. This is a video where I was testing the uh, RN noise, noise removal using Noise Torch, which is what I'm currently using right now. If you're in DaVinci Resolve Studio, you'll want to go to Color. Something I like to do is I like to hit Shift S. So I have four of these. And you want to do your color conversion all at the end of your node tree. So that before the color conversion, you're working on the actual log footage. What I'll do is I'll open effects. I have a color space transform here. And I will drag and drop that into the last node. Now, because I know I'm working with, now because I know I'm working with Panasonic V log with true V gamut. So I'm going to. First and foremost, you have your footage loaded in. You want to go into your project settings in DaVinci Resolve. Make sure your resolution matches your resolution of your footage. You don't have to save it like I just did immediately. You can switch it to your resolution. Match your frame rate. And you want to go to color management. I like to go to Color Science, DaVinci, Color Managed. I'll switch this to HDR because it is 10-bit. My output color space is Rec 709. You could set it to Rec 2020 if you're color grading with an HDR-capable monitor, which I want to test this under Caden Live because it can enable HDR, but I need an HDR monitor first to test this, but I want to do my color processing that way. Quick save. Now from this last node here at the end of the node tree, for the input color space, you want to set, you want to match your camera. So mine is Panasonic B gamut. You'll see that it didn't really change much. The blues got a little more saturated there. But I'll go back, set Panasonic V gamut because it is a true V gamut. And I'm going to set my input gamma to Panasonic V log. Now the image is going to get darker. Now from here, you can. Convert your output color space to Rec 709 
to get your proper colors for color grading in Rec. 709. The other thing you can do is say maybe you're shooting an interview and say you're using a Lumix S5 II recording in V gamut, but maybe you're using a Sony camera that is recording S log at the as maybe your B cam. And maybe you want to match those two cameras. And you set that camera to S log three. You can go S gamut three. S log three. But then you need another node after this to then convert S log three into Rec 709. Hit Alt S to do node after the node you were just in. You can go here. And now I can actually say S gamut three. Sony S log three. And then I can go down and say Rec 709. Rec 709. That is in a mixed camera shooting session. But then from there, when you do your conversion either from the log footage of the camera itself into Rec 709 or Rec 2020 if you're color grading specifically to output HDR. Rec 709 is standard dynamic range. You can then color grade from your other, other nodes. So once you're at this point with your color conversion, I like to go back to the beginning. I'll get rid of effects. Move my nodes over. I'll go back to my first node. I usually like to apply contrast with the tone curve. Just a small amount. After I have my contrast here, you can use your first node and bring your overall image up. But I can bring my offset up a little bit. Bring my gain up just a tiny, tiny bit. Go back to my tone curve. Give it some contrast and I like to go into here and I like to go to waveform. And I'm looking right here in the center of where I'm positioned slightly over to the left. And I just want to make sure that I'm not flipping myself or my highlights for that matter. Bring down my gain just a little bit. And that's roughly what I do for color grading if I'm doing anything inside of uh, like stylized color grading, I'll go in a little more. Now, these effects on the AMD, it is using OpenCL Open to accelerate them. So it is better. But with this basic color grade, let's see how it plays back. OBS Studio. Now, OBS Studio does have RN noise. Hey, I'm getting the 24 um, frames a second. I can't find any uh, specific settings in OBS Studio to let me fine tune RN noise. But I'm going to. Okay, as you can see, plays back totally fine. Grub's totally fine. So I will be investing in some new lighting, some dedicated video lights. But let me know if you have any questions. Um, when I eventually have my Blackmagic design camera, <laughs> I will go through a tutorial matching the two cameras because I plan on shooting some interviews where I want an A cam and a B cam. And the Panasonic will become the B cam. I may update the firmware on it to the paid firmware where it'll output Blackmagic RAW 
out of the HDMI jack and capture Blackmagic RAW, but the camera will still be outputting B-Log. So there is that. So I'll still have to do some color matching. Let me know in the comments uh, any videos you'd like to see next. Like, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you and bye.